Hello everyone and welcome to Hardcore episode 14. Back at the village today as usual to do some more much needed upgrades to this entire area. But first, we must feed the cows. Here you go cows, that's it, that's it. Between clips I only did a couple of things. One of those things was I created a pickaxe. So I have this pickaxe here now that has fortune three on it. I just did that by combining the books from the librarians just like we did the first time, but now it's on diamond. So that's even better. We can now go mining with that. Let's start the day off with some good old fashioned farming, shall we? Right, job done, got a whole bunch of wheat. Let's go put this away in the storage room now and get organized for today. Also, did a bit of mining off camera, got basically just a stack of iron ore and I've been just slowly smelting that up to get us prepared for the next stages of this upgrade. So I'm sure with all this talk of me upgrading the village, you're probably wondering what the next stage is. And one of the more important things that we need to do is actually get discounts on our villagers. As you can see, well, they're going to bed but as you can see things are pretty expensive around here and if we convert them to zombie villagers and then convert them back i know it sounds a little cruel but trust me it works we gotta trust the process we can then get discounts permanent discounts which will be great and sorely needed i'm sure since we're doing so much trading villager i'm trying to sleep what the heck <laughs> Road. Now I'm not quite ready to do the, any villager converting quite yet, but we do have a brewing stand over here. It doesn't have a home, it's just randomly sitting on the ground, but that's okay. We can actually start making weakness potions, which is the thing that we need to convert villagers. That and golden apples, which I also don't have a ton of, so it's a good idea for us to kind of just get started on the process, I think. And one of the things that we need for that is spider eyes, and I don't have very many spider eyes. I have exactly one. So I suppose we can work on that, huh? Spider eyes are gotten from spiders, and we happen to have access to a mine shaft right down here. So I think we're gonna start off today's episode by doing a little bit more mining and seeing if we can defeat a couple of spiders. Oop, two creepers. That seems a bit excessive. All right, creepers successfully taken out. There's actually so much railing down here as well. I kind of want to go ahead and grab a bunch of it today while I'm down here. Hello, Enderman. Don't hurt me, please. I think I already got this, but I'm gonna grab it again. I've already explored a whole bunch of this mine shaft, but I didn't collect absolutely everything in it, as you can see from some of the iron just kind of laying around. So we're gonna kind of try to clear it out right now. Hello, child. Oh, you hurt. I don't like them. I don't like them one bit. Luckily, I'm not actually taking any damage from this. Okay, cool. I'm a little rusty <laughs> on the fighting for some reason. Feeling a little weak. It's new year, new me. New year, weaker me. Ugh. Dear. Some mine cards. Don't mind if I do. Is that another Enderman? Why, dude? Why? Uh, we break the corners because this gives us better vision of the entire thing, and that is a spider. We need. Was that a dolphin noise? I swear I just heard a dolphin. Yeah, it was a dolphin noise. I bet. <laughs> this is the ocean. Hello, dolphin. Cool. Oh no no no! This is too fast. Too fast. Let me let me out. Should also grab some coal because for some reason I've been lacking in the coal department. Oh, cool, it's a room with poppies in it. Wait, no, 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 none of that, none of that, that's enough. And spider, I need you for your eyeballs, please. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, okay, that's kind of important because that's gonna be a really good source of spider eyes. However, it's, it's also gonna spawn a lot of baddies. Um, so that's cool. There are a lot. Come here, spideys. Oh, their hitbox is so tiny. Hello, come here. Oh gosh, ah. Tiny hitboxes suck. <laughs> Luckily I have pretty good armor. Oh, I see that creeper. I'm gonna go deal with that creeper before it deals with me. Um, yep, there we go, much better. And here's a big spider. Can you drop an eyeball? No eyeball still. Why? Okay, I think this is just a regular cave. Um, but it looks pretty cool, so that's good. Hello, zombie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Or not. This feels so massive. I love exploring this. Look at this ravine. It's another ravine. Gosh. I don't know what that sound is, but I don't like it. 
Oh, I found it. I figured it out. Don't worry. Oh, oh, I'm in a death area. And I didn't even know. How cute. Okay, we, we leave. We leave out of here. We, that's not good. Having creepers potentially above your head is never a good thing. Oh, that's a cave spider. What's that? Enderman. Okay. Why did a cave spider just casually cr- Oh! That's why we check the corners. That is why we check the corners. Oh my gosh! How horrible! It's fine. Um, <laughs> I feel very silly for even considering this in hardcore. Like, why am I here? Why do I have myself in this position? I- Hello? Can we be friends, you think? All right, spider eye though. Heck yeah. Okay, that's kind of what we came for, but we only have one of them, but we at the very least located the source of some spider eyes so we can potentially farm them. And honestly, I'm quite happy with that result. I think I can stop risking my life at that news. Is this the exit? Is this how I get out of here? Can't remember. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit lost, not gonna lie. Um, oh. This is it. Found it. Did it. That actually only took me like five minutes to find the exact place that I exited. That's amazing. I can hear my cats. This is not quite right, but it's like almost right. Hang on. It's this way. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Just like that. We're home. I don't know how I don't get lost in caves, but I think I've just played Minecraft for long enough to have a better sense of direction in Minecraft than I do in real life because I get lost in real life all the time. But in Minecraft? No, no chance. I got it. Handled. <laughs> Jeez. All right, up we go. Oh, and it's nighttime. Lovely. I love that for us. Good. Iron Golems, I'm so glad that you're so good at your job. Right, well, with that taken care of, I will now put away our spider eye and we'll return to that spider eye project at a later date. For now though, let's just sort all of these items into their respective spots, get some of that iron smelting. Where was it? Right here, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so while we're on the topic of defending the castle walls, sort of, still, um, we're gonna talk about this wall a little bit more because I kinda think that I know the design that I wanna do. We just kind of got to do it now and it comes with a transformation because this wall is attached to this build down here and I think I'd really like to just turn this into a little area. Like what if this was a little tower? This is our stonemason's house so we can have like the stone cutter set up and all of that but it can be incorporated into a castle tower. I think that'd be really cute. I see no problems there. So this is five, well, let's go with that. Let's kind of take down this roof a little bit and start on the transformation. Whoop, I'm stuck. Okay, it's fine. So the tricky part is definitely going to be working with this roof. I'm basically just gonna take off the edge and kind of work it into the original building because honestly, I don't hate this original building. I think it's pretty good actually. I think we can work with it. Uh, we just gotta build it up though. So basically this whole corner is gonna be like a little off center sort of tower. There we go. This is a lot better, I bet. Let me just hop on down. Yes, this is a great placement for a tower. Hang on, let's get a better view. Yep, that'll be so cool. And I love the look of the wall coming off of it already. This wall needs to be raised up, but for that, I honestly, I need a lot of blocks. I have very few blocks on me and it's, oh, hi, chicken. It's very unfortunate. So I think I'm gonna spend a little bit just gonna go down in the mines and do a bit of mining. I got my I like stone silk touch pickaxe on me. I'm just gonna go down collect several stacks of this stone and uh, kind of see how it goes. All right, mining mission was a success. I now have a bunch more stone. I put some in storage and everything is ready to kind of work on these walls. I think I'm gonna go ahead right now and get a base layer of stone brick or at least attempt to get one around the entire area. And then I'm also gonna work on building up this. So here's my plan, right? We're gonna space out these sort of pillars to kind of decorate and give some depth. By depth, I just mean it like coming out, like this is a layer of depth, that's two layers of depth and so on and so forth. That was a horrible explanation, but um, we're gonna add these pillars. So every three blocks, we'll just put one and that way we could decorate it a little bit better. And then I think along the bottom here, maybe just a little touch of polished andesite. We can get some cracked stone bricks on the go, some leaves, just all the things and slowly just kind of build up this wall across the entire area. 
It is, however, going to be a very long process, so I suppose I have to get started on it. I'll bring you all back when I am a little bit further along. Wish me luck. I did it. Isn't it cool? It looks like a castle. I'm so excited by this. It's just one small section of wall. The rest is not done. Um, but this is what I kind of fleshed out and I'm thinking will work for the castle. We're going to do a whole bunch of building over here now to kind of work on this and get the stonemason in place. But this was just a very repetitive section of wall. We're going to repeat this basically all the way around. As you can see over here, we're kind of continuing this. We're continuing it over there. We just got flat stone walls. We're just going to surround this entire village in these beautiful big castle walls. And I'm so excited for it. It's gonna be stunning, I think. I did all of this in a Twitch live stream, so it is technically recorded on camera. Maybe I'll put it on a second channel if that's something you guys are interested in, but the VOD is on my Twitch link down below if you're interested in actually seeing it being built live. It's just a bit of a boring, repetitive process, which is why I didn't record it for YouTube. My Twitch chat did, however, point out a couple of issues with this. First one being this. They can just yeet themselves over this wall which I'm confident, knowing the way that my villagers are, they would just jump off of this. They, they would. Um, so I have a couple of options. I can do like fences, walls, I can raise up these castle carnulations, or at the minute, I just have some rails along here. Mobs have a really hard time walking along rails. So I think the fact that these are there will prevent them from thinking that they can jump over this. Um, but it's not a good permanent solution. We'll have to work on that. But look at this. Go walk all the way along. All the way along. It's so nice. Ah, it just makes me so happy. I cannot wait to see it when it's finished. The wall being done is indeed a beautiful sight, but this building right here, our lovely stonemason lives in it. This mason needs a proper home, and this is going to be the next topic of transformation for the village. Just like we did with the bakery and the library, we're going to transform this into a kind of proper area. It's got the tower attached to it right now. We're going to kind of keep that vibe going throughout to kind of incorporate it into the castle wall itself. Get a tower going here, and then I think we can pretty much keep some of this. Like, I really like the roof. I think we need to go get some granite for the roof and we'll swap out to oak wood for the walls instead of that pink. And then honestly, I think that might be good. Let's go do that. Crafting another crafting table, don't mind me. It's not like I already have thousands of these around or anything, it's fine. I'm fine, this is fine. Okay, so main thing, we need to take down some of this structure. Like I don't really want those oak fences, sorry. I mean, your, your front porch was lovely, but um, I'm just, it's fine. I'm gonna change it. And then all I'm gonna do is come in exactly where the roof already was and just change it out to the proper colors because this is already kind of cute. Like I don't hate it. So just a quick change of things, you know? Now it's time to start thinking about this tower. So this is a fairly tiny tower. It's not meant to match those ones. And I also have a bigger one going up over there and there'll be bigger ones around where the castle is. This is a little bit of a smaller one. It is meant to just blend in with the stonemason's house, not really take it over, but I still want it to be relevant. So we're gonna kind of build it up like so, adding a little rim of polished andesite. And then hopefully I'll get some of my stairs going here and we can kind of just add a few details on the corners here overhanging. Okay, I think that about works. Uh, let's get a couple torches in and then jump down and see how this looks. Um, yep, that doesn't hurt. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, right? I know it's, it's kind of tiny, but I think it does the trick to be just blended in with our stonemason's house here. It just kind of breaks up the repetitiveness of the wall. And also that's a circle tower, this is a square tower, so it's a little bit different. Hopefully that'll make sense. I think it does. I think I like it. I'm gonna try my hand at just adding a little bit of a balcony kind of over this with some slabs. Yeah, I think that's kind of cute. Adds a little bit of charm to it. And I also think it would look really good with a chimney, maybe off to the other side, just to kind of dress it up. Yep, I like it. My only problem is this is a little bit simple and tiny. So I've had an idea of what if we use this section of wall right here, and instead of kind of continuing this wall just to be the exact same on the other side, what if this wall was just a continuation of the mason's house right down to a point over here, just to give our mason a little bit more space. I think that could be really cool. I don't know how exactly I'm gonna do it, but let's try and plan that out. 
Do you see this? I open up one section of wall in one tiny area and all the villagers are instantly like, ah, yes, this is the place to be. We're gonna hang out over here. Gosh, this is why we can't have nice things, guys. You're gonna die. Okay, so far, I definitely don't hate it. It's pretty cool. It needs to like properly merge into this, so I think we get rid of that and just have the roof come flat across, but for that I need more granite, which I think I have down in the mines. I hope. Not 100% sure. Never thought I'd be the type of person who comes down in the mines not to mine diamonds, but just, just to get granite. That's all. But it's such a pretty block, it's so good! I think if I just place enough blocks, it'll eventually make sense. That's how building works, isn't it? Okay, there it sort of is. So it kind of just continues the wall along this way. Uh, definitely a weak point in our wall, but it's single player, so I, I don't think I have to worry about raiders getting around a house. <laughs> as long as there's a building here, it should be fine. I'm gonna put a big chimney in this, definitely, over on the side maybe, or maybe even on this side outside. Not sure, but it definitely needs one. And then maybe just some extra little roof details would help a lot. Right, I think I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It's been a really simple transformation, but we just come over here now. We have this beautiful tower and this whole little work area kind of set up. I've set up some desks and things that I can put things on eventually. We have some furnaces over here, some polished blocks, just things that in general would make sense for the stone cutter to have, or the stonemason, sorry. Can even move the actual workbench more in this area so the stonemason works inside and I'll just shove the crafting table in here for now. Interior is an absolute disaster, but that's okay. I need to finish off the wall before I worry about the interior. So this wall right here in particular, I need to figure out how this is going to hook up to this whole building. That's gonna be a little bit tricky, but it's something we can think about for sure. That has been a lot of building this episode. My goodness, <laughs> I'm tired just thinking about it. There are a couple of things that we need to complete the defense of this area. And something that we need to think about is how the walls can be defended. We have some options that like we could do like a lava moat. We could do drawbridges. We could potentially do anything. But one of the easier things to do is to just put berries along here so that mobs can't get in under here where we can't see them. The overhang kind of helps spiders not get up. But if we have berries down here, that would help a lot. It would also help if we got a pack of dogs. Not only would it be incredibly fun for me, but it would keep skeletons off of my kind of guards that I have out here guarding the gates. But that might be something to think about. The problem is we would have to find a taiga and I haven't actually found one yet. All I have is the mountainous biomes. While I'm on the topic, let's think a little bit about the defense of this wall. So I wanna be able to walk into these towers and kind of have these thin little corridors running along here. And it, I think it would be really useful to have like little arrow slits and things in the walls where we can shoot through to potential enemies. And also areas where we can easily get up and down and access perhaps secret areas throughout the base. They're a really useful defense strategy and that's why I've made them the size that I have. But there's lots of things we can do to make them better. Iron Golem, what are you doing? Ay, gosh, the walls are a, a danger to my villagers. Some of the things I'm gonna do around the village will be just for looks, but there are also some stations that I wanna have that will be genuinely helpful to the village. So let's set the, some of those up. First things first, visiting our stonemason. Let's grab a few of these stairs. Uh, not too many, we do need an even number though. 10 old work. Then I'm gonna come along in here with these stairs and just in a couple areas, uh, well, not, not this area, like maybe right here could just add little slots like this where we could see out and potentially shoot out. It's so like right here we can kind of see out and spy on things and I think that's a great thing to have. Now let's talk about the top. The top is gonna have a few things that are just decorative. For example, I would love to have some armor stands kind of up here showing off our armor that we have. Like look at this. Ready? I have so much of this armor, I could set up a bunch of it up here and have it look like there's actual guards up here. Obviously it doesn't serve any actual function, but it might look cool. I don't know. It would also be really smart to have little areas like this inside the towers where we have sort of crossbows and bows and potentially some arrows stored up and maybe some different like throwable potions and things. So if we're ever caught off guard, like we often are sometimes by patrols, we can grab something out of here that we need 
and quickly defend the castle without having to have anything on our inventory, because if I'm building or doing something else, I may not be ready. So from over here, we'll be able to climb all the way up to the top, and then I'll just put a flooring right here like so, and bam, we can shoot arrows and things from this tower now as well. Gosh, it's all coming together, isn't it? And once again, I will put a chest in here in case I need to grab some arrows out of it, and we'll have to slowly trade with the villagers to build those up, but that'll be great. Okay, well, I think that that is quite enough building, and it is time for us to officially change topics, because we have something that we need to talk about, and that is name tags. I have officially traded enough with a librarian villager to unlock name tags. So we have one librarian villager that is master, and I've recently found out, thanks to all of you, that you can actually name tag villagers, which like forever ago when I last played with villagers, I don't know when it was, probably version like 1.7 or 1.8, you couldn't name tag villagers. Dude, where are you going? <laughs> Ow. Why are they like this? Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, villager, villager, hello. Where are you going? Okay, you're, you're not the, you're not the one I was looking for, but why, dude? Go back in. Did you just need a private moment at the beach? What's going on? This wall is massive on the side. I'm not sure if I've shown it, but basically we're gonna have my castle over here and then a tower over here and a wall in between. And it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a big area. All right, um, friends, I'm missing a librarian. Where did they go? Oh, there they are. Okay, this is the master librarian, which unlocks name tags for us. So I can slowly trade up enough emeralds and get unlimited name tags, basically, which is gonna be super useful because we are gonna go on a mission to name all of these villagers. And I'm gonna start us off by naming a couple, okay? I wanna name our farmers. Okay, listen, I've had this narrative in my head that I've never told you for a long time, but we have farmers running the bakery, right? And I picture these as these adorable little partners that just run the own, their own little bakery. And this is Pierre and Barbara and their bakery. So Barbara over here is our potato farmer. So that means Pierre does beetroot and yeah, all that stuff. And then we'll have another farmer. We have to think of a name for the other farmer. But yeah, I'm starting off our naming of the villagers with Pierre and Barbara. <laughs> I love it. I love it. If you have any name suggestions, feel free. I I'll take name suggestions. I don't mind. But we're slowly going to get everybody built up and having names. And it's going to be epic. And I can't wait. <laughs> Honestly, was so excited when I found out that you could name tag villagers. Oh, also, hang on. <laughs> I've seen a comment saying this was bothering someone. So there you go. It's fixed. Okay, so next on the list of things we need is A, ice for the secret tunnel, and B, berry bushes for the wall. Um, we need those pretty desperately, to be honest. That's kind of the next step of defense. So I think I'm gonna take a little trip out to where those icebergs are. We found icebergs before. Hello, Milky. It's time for another trip. We found icebergs before. They were just out this way. We went on a little exploration and saw them, but I didn't gather any. So we're gonna go and take the lovely silk touch axe now and go get them. Or er, pickaxe, sorry, I can't speak. All right, Melky, the great expedition to get ice. What is wrong with your head? <laughs> He's just staring into his own shoulder. Oh dear, Melky, uh, it's fine. I think the ice was just past the swamp. It's honestly, it's not that far out of Melky. <laughs> I do enjoy that we have an adventurous cow. Ah, oh, there it is. Yes, there's the ice. I knew we were almost there. These are massive. Oh my gosh. I love it. It's so beautiful. I don't know how much I actually need, but it's really satisfying to gather this. Oh my gosh. Heck yeah. Okay, five and a half stacks. I think that ought to do it. But we are in a cold sort of area. Or actually, that's a savanna. Okay, it's not a cold area. But I'm just going to peek around and see if I can see a taiga biome while I'm on this end of things. These are the coordinates, by the way. We're not actually that far out. We're not even a thousand blocks out yet. So super easy to get to if we ever need more ice. It's oddly relaxing just rowing this boat with my cow in it. This is fine. This is great. All right, Milky, I have found you some pig friends. You're gonna hang out in here in the swamp while I check over this way for some berry bushes. Thank you. Actually, I'm just gonna take the coordinates of Milky real quick because it would be like me to lose them. So I've never actually been over this way and the other direction has all of the warm biomes. So uh, in Minecraft, biomes kind of tend to clump together a little bit, not always strictly, but I think this is something they changed in like 1.6 or 1.7 is that like, 
swamps and dark oak forests tend to spawn next to each other. Like deserts and savannas will tend to spawn next to each other. Whoop! I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't have my shield on me. Why don't I have my shield on me? Ugh. Anyways. Yeah, you understand what I was saying, right? Let me just quickly grab my shield. Oh my gosh. What a noob explorer I am. But yeah, basically in order to find the taiga biome, I need to get in a colder area and going towards a desert is not doing the trick. This, however, is at very least a little bit cooler. And yeah, look, there's some mountains over there. So a mountain biome is a lot closer to a taiga biome than a desert would be, I hope. I'm not actually sure if berry bushes spawn in mountains. But I am hoping they do. There's a skeleton behind me, isn't there? Oh, hey, look, it's a lava fall. That's actually so pretty. Skeleton, you have horrible aim. <laughs> oh, there's llamas. I love llamas. And this appears to be a taiga. All right, perfect. Look at those foxes and berry bushes. Ah, oh, they're adorable. Sadly, I am not here for the foxes, just the berry bushes, but it was definitely a bonus to see them curled up under a tree. Look at it. Oh. It is so cute. I'm sneaking so that I can get a closer look. Look. Okay, back away from the sleeping fox and grab some berry bushes. All right, I think I will call that mission accomplished because we can farm these berry bushes at home. So there's no reason for me to limb the entire forest of them. But now that we know this is here, we can come back and potentially get wolves at some point. So that's good. Now all I have to do is try and find Melky again. Hopefully that's not too difficult. I think I left Milky somewhere along here. Pigs, did you watch over my cow for me? Ah, yes, there you are, Milky. Mission accomplished, we head home now. Ah, home sweet home. Look at how lovely it looks from this view as well. It's gonna be so cool once the wall is all the way up and looking lovely. Ah, I can't wait. Now. On to the berry bushes. The berry bushes are basically just gonna go, whoop, no, not like that, all along like this. We're not gonna have enough right now, but they'll grow more and hopefully be able to line the entire castle. That's the goal anyways. They should grow rather quickly and then I'll be able to replant them along the whole things. Honestly, they also just look good. Like <laughs> They just kind of look good along the base of the wall. I'm not gonna be putting them inside the village because I do think the villagers will decide to just unalive on them randomly because villagers are like toddlers. Um, I do feel like I have a, an entire village of children, but it's fine. Pierre and Barbara, you are the exceptions. You guys are beautiful and I love you so much. <laughs> Look at them in their little bakery. Right, okay, perfect. The ice is gonna be for down in the tunnel, but I don't think I'm gonna put that down there now. I did a lot of grindy building today with all these walls and I, that's enough. <laughs> we'll do it next episode. I'm allowed to be lazy from time to time, right? With that though, everyone, I do think that is all the time that I have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I've had so much fun recording this series and I hope that you're enjoying watching it. If you are, please don't forget to subscribe. We're almost at that 600,000 subscriber milestone. It would mean a lot to me if we could hit that this year. That'd be super awesome. Thank you so much for all your support and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to leave me all of your ideas and suggestions and stuff for the walls down below. I can't wait to hear from you. Bye-bye.